we are going to talk about using Canvas in your in-person and hybrid classes. And then I decided to use this little tool that I use in my class. Uh, let me share my screen. It's called Pear Deck. And so what you do here is you go to this um, URL here, join PD. I'm going to do this on my phone because I always like to see what you see. You can do it on your phone or your computer. When you go to joinpd.com, Should I do that? Yeah. Yeah. Do, okay. Go ahead and do it. Okay. And then, uh, should I, I put it? Those? Do I need to put it in the chat? I think I should. Put it. Oh, I, I, I'm at the site. Oh, you're at the site. The okay. And then you see this, it says join a lesson, and then you type in the letters on your screen. So you type in YJJWBC. Yeah. Okay. Then you should see emojis. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, Choose the emoji just to get started. And everyone's connected, so I can see that. So on the teacher side, you I can see that everyone's connected now and um, can start the presentation. Hey, Judy, before you go on, what, what was the code again? I want to write it down. So oh, yeah. OK, so it's in the right corner. Can you see that in the right corner, yeah. YJJWDZ? No, because your faces are over it. That's why oh, I can not find okay. it. Uh, OK. Yeah, so the code's there. And what this is, in case you're wondering, it's a Google Slides add-in. It, it builds in interactivity into your slides if you're ever presenting on slides. And you'll see that in just a bit. Okay, so is, you can see my screen and everything. It's, it's every, okay, great. All right, so Lori, Nora, and I are presenting this um workshop and you know who we are <laughs> we're nor is the poker coordinator and Lori and i are the co-coordinators okay so let's start off with um the teaching modalities um the teaching modalities are face-to-face 100 percent in person all scheduled class meetings are on campus then we have hybrid which is partially online with scheduled class meetings on campus. And then within that, we have asynchronous, which can be fully online with no Zoom meetings, and then synchronous, fully online with scheduled Zoom meetings. Um, so for today, we're going to focus on the face-to-face -face and the hybrid. And of course, your um, hybrid, I guess, could be, could, have, um, could be synchronous too, right? All right, so here, there's a question, what modalities are you teaching? And then to um, answer the question, you hit answer question, and then I can see responses coming in. And then I'll show the responses. <laughs> okay, all right, so I see face-to-face, -face, hopefully forever, right? In <laughs> Big letters, right? And then uh, hybrid and asynchronous, somebody's typing. And then face or. <laughs> There's her fun. Okay, so looks like we're all doing some kind of face to face and Oh, so is that you, Lori? That oh, <laughs> cat's typing. Okay, so that's Lori. Lori's doing a hundred percent asynchronous and a hybrid class. Okay, and same for me. I'm doing hybrid. I guess all of mine are hybrid this semester. Hi, Irfan. Okay. Hello. Uh, every meeting. Every meeting. Okay. So so when you think about using Canvas and you think about an in-person class, and that would be Chris, because he says he would like to teach that forever. Um, what role do you see Canvas play in in-person classes? And you 
answer the question. There should be three choices there. And choose the one that applies to your philosophy or your feeling about it. Okay. All right, so we have three responses and I'll show them. Okay, so for a hybrid class, right, we're say, we see that who thought that it's exactly the same as an asynchronous class with fully built modules and use of most Canvas tools. And then uh, one person said that it's limited use with some Canvas tools. And it's good to see that, no, uh, that nobody selected none, it's unnecessary. That's a, a great sign. I would honestly, I would answer all three because it's not necessary. Oh. I, I would argue that all day. Uh -huh. but, I mean, we we can teach face to face without ever touching Canvas, right? Well, Chris, I would I would gently argue with that and say it's a really nice place to post your grades so that students can keep track of where they are in the class. That's not my point. I'm using it plenty. I'm one of the light blue. But my point is, it is not necessary. The word necessary means you must do it. And oh, we don't I do see it. what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. Like then, by law or something. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, okay. I, I uh, let's. I, sorry, I didn't mean to. I don't mean to gum things up. So no, no, no. That's good to throw that out there because yeah, it is a word that sounds like it, it, in your view, right? It sounds pretty strong that it's like required and necessary. And we're just about to go into why it um, is suggested, why it's a good practice. And yep. it sounds like you're doing that anyway. Hi, Reggie. Okay. All right, I'm gonna hide the responses. Okay, so now let's switch to the same question with the role that Canvas plays in your in-person classes. So the last time was hybrid, right? And now it's in-person. Oh, <laughs> am I on the same page? Wait, did I, wait, did I, did I go to the right one? Lori and Nora, <laughs> let's see. Maybe I'm not here. Sorry, I, I was think trying to get When I click on it, it says I've, that I've already answered it. Okay. So, so maybe oh, I'm sorry. To... Oh, hybrid, hybrid, right? Yeah, yes, what role does Canvas play in your hybrid class? So that's good to know. So if you already, so if I've already done that slide, then it tells you that it's um, already been done. It, it showed my response. Okay. All right. So now we're switching to hybrid. We started with in person, and now we're thinking about how it can be used in your hybrid class. Okay. So it's basically the same, right? Exactly the same as with asynchronous classes with fully built modules and use of most Canvas tools or limited use with some Canvas tools. And then it's a good thing that um, for a hybrid class, it doesn't say nobody chose none, it's unnecessary. And to head off your question, Chris, I think in hybrid classes, it is necessary because it's the Campus LMS. The first question asked about face-to-face. -face. This one's right. asking about hybrid. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, okay, so now we're gonna talk about how Canvas can complement any course, hybrid, in-person, face-to-face. All right. Um, so basically it supports any of the in-person learning taking place in your course. So when you're giving a lesson, um, you can provide lecture notes, um, handouts that you give out in class, any videos or audio that you play during the class. You can have links to those things in your Canvas. Um, it's really nice for students to have that online calendar reminder about your assignments or anything that's coming up in your course. And then you can also use it for the assignment submissions in one organized place. Okay. So I know that even when I teach in person, I like to sometimes have the students um, submit the assignments for me as an instructor because they're all in one place too. I'm 
not constantly having a ton of papers all over the place. Um, so the other reason is uh, for communication, that it ensures regular and substantive communication. Uh, so according to Title V, if you have any DE component to the course, you want to be providing that interactive uh, communication online as well, in addition to what's happening in your in-person class or your Zoom session. Uh, so um, this can happen in many different areas. And we did a presentation on communication earlier. Uh, we have the slides to those and you could refer to those. And I'll talk a little bit about that more later. And then again, going back to the grade book, it allows students to track their progress uh, stay up to date with where they're at in the class and then adjust their learning accordingly. And then from all that, if you're doing all of this, then hopefully it can reduce your workload of um, all those emails from students asking you, I miss class. What's the homework? I lost the handout. I need the handout. They have a place they can find all of these things or, you know, especially for ESOL students, it's so helpful for them to be able to rewatch um, a video, if they're, if an assignment is based off of a video or an audio, they can uh, go back and watch it again if it's uh, in your Canvas course. And then with all of that, that makes your course accessible, um, provided that you've made all of these uh, pages and discussions and everything accessible, but that makes the course available to everyone, um, no matter how they access your class or how they take your class. Uh -huh. Can I interject, Judy? Yes, yes. So Judy was saying that it's helpful to um, give students materials in my classes. So I teach biology classes. Even before COVID, I would record the audio in my classes and post the audio in Canvas. And then I actually gave students extra credit to do the transcripts. Because if you've got audio online, you have to meet the accessibility requirements. Um, so I would give my students extra credit to transcribe the audio. And I always had students that wanted to do that because especially, you know, Judy was talking about ESOL students and language, even in the science classes, like they're learning a new language. And so it was helpful for them to listen to the audio and do transcripts. And they all complained that it took, to, took a long time, but that they then all did really well on those sections on the exams. So just to let you know another way to, to use it. Right. And I'm always surprised too, because I always think nobody's watching these videos, like my Zoom recordings or something. And then, you know, the one time that I forget to post it you know, on time, I'll get an email from a student saying, oh, the, you know, the Zoom recording is not there. And you can actually see in the Zoom platform that, you know, how many times it's been viewed. So, and I'm like, oh, wow, people are watching it and people are doing it, uh, looking for it. Okay. Nora, did you have anything else you wanted to add to that? Okay. Nope, so good. In the Canvas Studio, too, remember that it'll tell you exactly who watched it for how long. Um, so that's also a benefit to using Canvas to your face-to-face -face class as well. Okay, another question. <laughs> so of all the Canvas tools that are available to you, which ones do you think would support your in-person class. So whether it's assignments, announcements, the calendar, discussions, what kind of tools do you think are helpful in an in-person class? Okay, I'll share the responses here. Okay, so we have home page, modules, syllabus, assignments, people, announcements. Wow, quite a good selection here. Uh, modules and pages, right? All, okay, all except discussion and studio. Oh, interesting. Okay. And assignments. Okay, so it looks like there is something from Canvas in all of the answers. Okay, so the same question. Oh, no, not same question. Okay, so minimum recommendations. Okay, not requirements, but minimum recommendations for in-person classes. 
Um, we recommend that if, to communicate your course content, you build modules or pages that house your lecture notes, handouts, embedded videos, and audio used in class. So you can have a place students can access that. Uh, the gradebook, making sure that the gradebook is visible, because I know that sometimes some instructors hide it, um, but having it visible so that they can check it at any time. And then communication, for communication, uh, using the announcements. It's you know a great way if you need to change something about your class, you're not uh, you're absent or you need to remind them of uh, an important assignment, you can use the announcements because they get that notification. If you tell them to set the notification, um, they get that on their phone and they, they have that extra reminder. And then um, using the Canvas inbox or Peralta email. So that's basically the minimum that we think are um, good guidelines for in-person classes. What is required, though, is if you're using Canvas, all this content needs to be accessible. So um, with these minimum recommendations, remember that as you build the content in Canvas, it all has to be accessible. And so for, I don't know if any of you have saw, seen this, there is a self-paced accessibility course going on right now. <laughs> and I think maybe, I don't know if anyone's enrolled in here. Let's see, Irfan's already taken it, but yeah. I think Raji, yes, I, I, I am think. in already. Okay, yeah. So that will also help you with um, making your course accessible if you have questions about that. Okay, now switching to hybrid classes. Which tools do you think support students in your hybrid classes? Okay, let's show the responses. All right, all again, all. <laughs> and then uh, listing of homepage, modules, syllabus, assignments, people, big blue button, announcements, discussions, grades, name coach, studio, online tutoring and quizzes, and then most. Okay, so now we'll look at the minimum requirements for uh, no, recommendations for hybrid classes. Okay, so as most of you said, building modules that house lessons, assignments, quizzes, and discussions to fulfill the instructional requirements of the core. So I know right now, at least in our department, we're talking a lot about this, you know, what the core says. So, you know, for example, I'm teaching uh, a four unit class. So, I, and it's a hybrid class. So I have uh, my in-person class two hours, and then I should be giving two hours of Canvas instructional content and another eight hours of homework to be done. So trying to look at that and design your course in a way that reflects those hours. I think, Lori, too, you said in your department, you were also having this discussion. Was that right? Were you talking about that, too? Yeah. OK. And then um, in your Canvas course, you know, differentiating that so students know this is what's taking place in Canvas. This is what's taking place in person. And, uh, putting that, and we'll show some examples of that in a moment. And then again, going back to the gradebook, maintaining your student grades in the Canvas gradebook and making it visible. and uh, again, with communication and interaction, using all of the same things we said for uh, in-person classes, but maybe you're going to use discussions and uh, for the instructor communicating to students, use the speed grader comments when you're grading their homework. This is a form of communication. And again, this is covered in our workshop on communication, the different areas where you can communicate with students. I feel like there's something else that we, that we emphasize about communication. 
in an area. Well, mm -hmm. one point I want to make is is that people I think miss is that with hybrid classes, there's the instructor student um, communication and the student to student communication. And for instructor to student, there are the same requirements in a hybrid class as there are for a fully online class. So faculty sometimes think if it's hybrid, I'm getting all my instructor student um, interaction in the face to face part, which is true, but for the hybrid class, you still have to have the instructor um, student communication as well. It can't, you can't be totally MIA in the hybrid, in the online part of the class. You have to have that same instructor student contact. And then depending on what your course says, you may also have to have a high level of student to student contact as well. And that really depends on what's in the core, but it has to be in that um, online component of the course as well. I don't know if that's what we were talking about, but that just popped up for me. Oh yeah, that's very good. Is there any any questions about that? Okay. Okay. So um, Nora shared with me this is adapted from uh, DVC's program on becoming an effective online instructor. They have what's called the hybrid loop, and it is uh, trying to make sure that there is this seamless transition between both the online environment and the in-person experience. So you can do this through your Canvas course design. And it includes these four areas, um, in-person class, of course, that's face-to-face, -face. outside of Canvas, they're not on the, they're not in Canvas, they're just outside and maybe you have an assignment where you're telling them that they need to observe, um, some behavior and then report on that. So they're outside making those observations or making those notes online. Maybe they're doing some kind of research, gathering of information on the internet. And then inside Canvas, of course, is inside Canvas, all the different uh, tools that you use to work inside Canvas and then in person. So here it looks like this is the order it should go in, but that's not necessarily how it goes. It's just the different uh, facets to consider when you're designing your Canvas course design, you're in your designing your Canvas course. So we're going to look at three examples. Um, the first example is how you can do this in a homepage. And I think this was Lori's and then Lori's um, going to talk about her homepage here. Yeah, I also found, um, so there's two examples here. Mine is the bottom left and and it's from the current course I'm teaching now, which is Bio 20B. And then um, the course, the top right with the big red banner, that's from um, Nora's Design to Align course for poker. And that's an example that's available through the state. And these are both for hybrid classes. Um, and you can see that in the one with the red banner, for example, it's got the weekly modules. So where um, students should expect to be. Um, there's quick links to help them um, get what they need quickly if they have specific help. And then notice that there's instructor, instructor contact information. So you could put an image of yourself there, but then it, um, be explicit about how students can contact you. Um, the thing I would change about this is putting the when um, a student could contact you um, through office hours or, um, you know, if they can make an appointment, for example. And you can see then in my example, um, I have a title. So I change the home page with every new module so that students know what we're doing in that module. I usually put a, a picture that represents kind of what's in that module. And then I have a very rudimentary start here button, which says we are here. It tells them what module they're in and the title of that module. And then under that, I tell them that my office hours and I have the location and the time and the days um, that the office hours are. Um, and then it, I give them links to previous modules if they want to go back to previous modules. So does anybody, 
anybody have any oh, questions yeah. on those? Um, oh, the I don't know. Hey, Chris, can you mute yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I can mute him. Never mind. Any okay, questions? any questions on those or things um, to add? Okay. Okay. All right. So, our second example is. I can't remember. Oh yeah, this is Nora's class, and this is how she shows uh, what's happening in the Zoom session um, for a synchronous class. Yeah, so I think it, I would address this pretty exactly the same. I think with a synchronous versus a hybrid, um, you know. So in a hybrid course where we meet once a week on campus, I would. I would do this exact thing. So I still make a page with the agenda and I place it in the module at the point that I think it's most you know, relevant. I want them to do everything before that, before we meet in class and then after class, do the rest. And so this, they will have been introduced in the previous content in the module. I've got videos where I'm introducing the subject they read stuff, there's there's actually this share surprising cultural difference that opens up to a Padlet. So they're, you know, already engaging and discussing stuff that way, learning vocabulary. Then we meet in class and have our whole class session. And uh, what is nice is, you know, students often kind of get lost or they don't attend. And this way they can, click on this in the module each week and be able to find the slides from that session, any other relevant handouts I might have given out then, um, and any, you know, any other announcements I happen to make that were important. I'll go ahead and capture those on this page as well, just as kind of a, you know, a list of what happened during class if they missed it. Um, and then they continue on. And so I, I feel like this kind of, kind of helps students understand the flow of the hybrid learn, do stuff in Canvas, come to class, whether that's in Zoom or on campus, kind of doesn't matter. And then what do they do after? And following this, my students have appreciated kind of this, oh, your class is so well organized and they know where they can find stuff and it's consistent every time. So that's this. Okay. And I kind of have a similar um, example next, and I'll show you how I do it in my class too. Hey, before you go on to the next one, Judy. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I just wanted to point out notice in the links, Nora says, um, note I don't post Zoom meetings automatically because attendance in the session every Thursday is required for the class. Um, but she gives an option to get those Zoom. Um, recordings. So just letting students know that they're available if they need them, but also why they're not, why they can't find them. So that will also help eliminate a lot of questions like where's the Zoom recording from class on whatever date. They already have the information on the class information so that when they're trying to go to this page to find the Zoom recording, there's a note there telling them why they can't find it and then they need to contact Nora. Right. And that that's great, too, because it builds an accountability like you think, oh, well, I don't need to go to class. I can just watch the Zoom meeting. Right. So that's, a, you know, another great way to. Help. Yeah. And there's there's kind of two camps. Right. There's the camp of instructors who they just post the recording. Right. So I've done it both ways. It depends on the topic I'm teaching. It depends on the level I'm teaching. I have often gone ahead and just posted the link to the Zoom recording on this page. Um, this is a higher level class, it's business English. It's like in business, you just gotta show up, right? So I kind of play it how I feel each semester and, and go with that. Um, yeah, it is too easy for students to just say, I, I don't need to go to class, <laughs> so. But I also like that there's the potential here for reducing a large amount of emails that faculty get. Like also, I like pointing out ways that could potentially reduce our work in the long run. So it may seem like a pain in the butt to put this note in, 
But if it saves you getting 30 emails over the course of the semester, to me, it's much easier to do this than have to answer all those emails. Yay. Yes, I, mean, for sure. I love it. Okay, so I said my example is kind of similar in that my module opens up on the day that we meet in class. So that's the in person class and it starts at the top uh, with a page of what we did in class. Then they work through this content over the week and then at the end of the week. Um, I have a class office hour I call it a class office hour because. I, I can't call it a class meeting because it's not in the schedule, but I have it as a scheduled class office hour and students come and we'll go over some of the material that we um, studied that week. And so I'll have a page there where it says class office hour and uh, same as Nora, we have an, a little agenda about what we did and a reminder of the announcement that I made, um, the YouTube video that I played during that office hour. And then uh, we did uh, some activities on a Google Doc with that video, and I posted the link so they can see what uh, we wrote during that time on the Google Docs. And then I do have the class recording for that right here. So um, usually because not many can attend, depending on the semester, and so I feel like I want to put it there just in case. All right. Any questions about any of the examples or anything there? Uh, Irfan, did you want to add any examples um, from your class or anything that you wanted to share? He just sent me a message that he needs to buzz out, so he may. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, so let's use this time to build a home page all right and um, for building a home page we're thinking about an in-person or hybrid class and on this home page you want to include the modality of the class the class time the day and the room number any scheduled zoom meeting times day and zoom link um, your office hours with the time day and location room number or zoom link and then your contact info best way to reach you and expected response time and then specifically for hybrid include a start here button to take students to the current module or steps on how to go there um, include directions for navigating to previous modules and then i have a tutor in my class so i like to put that on the home page so they uh, can contact her or go to her office hours and then um, for in person include directions for navigating links to supplemental materials or media used during the face to face class and then a canvas orientation because they might not know how to use canvas and so uh, including that orientation. Or a link to that orientation is very helpful on your home page. Okay, so let's and then oh yeah remember to make it accessible. So let's take time to build that. And so we've got about, um, let's see, it's 108. Um, should we give people like, I don't know, seven minutes and then we can check in and see if people want to share? Um, okay. Or um, I think Chris is in class. So Rajiv, it might just be you. Do you have a homepage that you want to share and we can talk to you about? edits you can make to it or do you want to build something from scratch or are you also <laughs> multitasking oh I, oh chris is in class right now I didn't know that. Oh, i'm not in class but i'm oh. i'm out and about oh. Oh, okay um yeah I'm, I'm using a i'm using a canvas site pretty extensively for my fully face-to-face -face class mm -hmm. um do you have a home page for that class yeah. What's on it, Chris? Um, it's either a weekly, usually it's each day, uh, a little looking ahead to the next day of class, what, what's due, and I put a link to any assignments. 
that are there. I've drilled the classes on navigating through the modules, but then the homepage is kind of just a reminder, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's the main thing. So it, tur it turns into kind of a, you know, now it looks like a calendar of the whole semester because I leave everything up to. Okay. So the so the mo the homepage acts as like where we are right now and and what's what's coming up for the next class and then they can go to the various modules to get what what do you put in your modules then after that all all the readings all the are readings. linked okay uh, or or uh, embedded you know documents mm -hmm. uh, activities assignments. Um, a little bit of lecture notes, not so much because it's an everyday face to face, you know, two, two days a week face to face class. Um, yeah, but I also put, use the homepage for like reminders and announcements, um, or I'll, I'll refer to announcements and then say, like, you know, click on announcements to learn more. Uh -huh. So a lot of extra credit assignments based on uh, things that are going on around the campus. Oh, make okay. announcements about those. Mm -hmm. Do you do you have yeah. it where the announcements show up at the top of the page? You know that yeah, like the last three announcements, they can click on that. Um, you you do it in the navigation, and it just like it'll, it'll you can say, oh, I want to show the last three announcements on on, on my home page. Oh, I didn't know about that. Yeah, so you can do it that way too. But I mean, if you if you give instructions on clicking on the announcements, that's you know they're going to see the same thing. But yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Place. And can I, I? I'm curious if someone would be interested in seeing um, before the pandemic, it's teaching only face to face. But I'm a web person, so I jumped into Canvas and used Canvas. I didn't use modules at all though. And I made a home page. And on the home page, I always put here's what we're doing this week in class, and then the homework. And I would just have links to whether it's to slides or to handouts and then assignments. So they did submit their assignments in Canvas or um, on paper, and then I would grade it in Canvas so students could track their grades and they they like that. And then each week I would archive off the content from the homepage so that it then built an archive for every week of the semester and they can go to the weekly archive and go back. So, oh, what it was, where's that, where are the slides from week three, right? So they could go to week on the archive and just look at week three. Um, and that really helped and students, it was easy to use. They didn't have to like figure out what modules are, they just, had the homepage and the weekly archive, that was it. And it, it supported the class. And I used announcements at the top of the homepage and had all my contact info on the homepage and stuff like that. Nora, I have a question about that. So did you, when you say archive the file, would you, would you give them access to the pages and then they could go to the pages? No, you can. Um, How would you do archive? Well, I just I just called it weekly archive. Oh, that's just the title. Okay. Is and so it? on my home, I can show you if you want, but yeah, sure. Do you want me to? Yeah. Um, I'll stop sharing. All right. So this is a listening, speaking one class, and the way it was left is it was the last week of school. So during the last week of school at the College of Alameda. We meet with students one on one. So that's all that happened the last week. But they were always able, so we're, that was week 15, I guess, <laughs> pandemic week. Um, and then they always had this weekly archive that opened a page, and oh. every week is here. Wow. Day two, um. here's the video I showed in class. This is what we did. This is the unit we're working on. Here's your homework. Here's day three, here's what we did, here's the homework, day four, week three, day five, day six, you know, whatever. So they just, it's just a long page. 
mm. all the links, anything. And then just the, we, we did have a book. Uh, so here's the page numbers of the homework, um, the videos that I used in class. I started learning about the coronavirus. <laughs> I have that too. Right Do you remember the, 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 this phase of life? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think I, I showed the DE coordinator at College of Alameda this as I was realizing, okay, we're having a pandemic and this is how I've been organizing my class. Is this okay? And she's like, yeah, it's fine. I mean, students can get what they need. So I just finished the class out this way rather than introducing the students to modules. I, you know, coming from a web design background, I don't really love the look of modules myself. So I uh, avoided it, but then I do understand. And in the fall after, I, of course, I built the entire course because the navigating through modules is really useful with the nexting and, and kind of having a little control over the presentation of the content and the activities, I think is, is important, so. I was exactly the same way during, pre, during when it all, I was using a blog, EduBlogs, and I had it all on one page. It didn't use modules. I mean, didn't break it out. And then, you know, after I started using Canvas, I started to use modules. But, right. Okay. Um, I guess I'll share the last, or do you want to share the last oh. screen, Slide. Judy? Okay, I'll yes. Have it up. All right. I'm not sharing anymore, right? No. Okay. Okay, so finally, um, we're glad that you can make it here. And if you missed any of our workshops we had for this semester, including this one, um, the first one was Accessibility Benefits Everyone. That's more about accessibility. And that's what I told you. Also, we have that self-paced accessibility class. Um, we ha had one on communication and then Canvas Studio, using Canvas Studio to make videos and to build in quizzes in your video. And um, we talked about that. And then if you liked this presentation, if you ever want a, a way to present your classes and have answers to questions on the screen like I did, it's called Pear Deck and there's a link here. So we'll make this presentation available along with the rest and Thank you for coming and here's our contact info. We're going to continue um, in this role next year. So we hope this was helpful to you. Thank you all for coming. Hmm.